Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dale Hawthorne. This is uh, going to be a continuation of my series on gifted, talented, and Christian, dealing with some uh, career ideas and personal productivity, which uh, I often made suggestions about to uh, other GT people in the past, dealing with IQ, IQ people. And right now, something which I really wouldn't have had years ago, but uh, um, something more right now, I'd encourage you to develop, if you're a high IQ person, your re research capabilities. You should really strongly consider the research skill sets and positions. You most likely have the intellectual curiosity and capability to do more research and add to the knowledge base of your company. And that can really set your career on fire. You can do it independently, your own company, yours, yourself, I, or if you're involved with a, a greater uh, corporation, consider that. And as we go on, we're talking about making the sale for you being able to do those type of things. One of the positions which uh, I unfortunately never pursued was a research position with Microsoft in the North Carolina area. Uh, my family priorities came first. Uh, my mother uh, lived into her 90s. She's passed away last year, and I wasn't going to move out of uh, my current area while she was still alive and leave other family members with having to uh, deal with taking care of her and so far. But research and innovation ever since I became involved in information technology and specifically software and development have actually been a strong part of what I've been doing since 1993. Yes, I'm a internet programmer. I've been able to uh, uh, crank out the web code and the commercial uh, websites uh, for a long time, since 1993 uh, and uh, earlier working in information technology and software development. So I think that uh, it's a very strong part of what we can deliver and it, on our jobs, in our careers, and it can help with our bottom line, with our salary, and being able to uh, finance ourselves going throughout our lives. And there is a tie-in as we start out to my previous video on developing your own research vault, your second brain, using notebooks. And if you get into group research, uh, you'll need to uh, learn how to use shared notebooks, Slack, and Notion, some of the group um, applications would permit you to share your findings and your research. So, we talk about research, I consider it just basically investigating, evaluating, and finding out useful things, and then from that, proposing and perhaps implementing ways in which those can be used for the business or corporation with which you're working. Um, you could be working for yourself. You could be uh, uh, delivering innovations for yourself to uh, um, put out for others, or you could be doing it for a corporation or a even a university uh, or other research uh, institution which has research as a part of it. So basic things, first of all, whatever field you're in, you need to keep up with your field. That way you'll avoid the, the blind alleys and missed opportunities which others have passed by. You'll know current innovations and issues, what others are doing. And if you're working on new technologies and areas of interest, you may need to uh, get some training in that first as a starting point but uh, with all there is available with training on the internet you really shouldn't have nearly as much of a problem as we would have had years ago when we had to try to get our managers to deliver our training opportunities to us over the years I did a lot of self-training in addition to corporate training in addition to some uh, graduate school but uh, training is a big part with being able to keep up with the field and see the opportunities avoid the past the blind alleys which others have gone down and in research you need to be able to see connections between things not just investigating new things but see connections between things that you've heard and that's a case where the high IQ person the intelligent person can really shine in seeing the connections and present and future opportunities don't often come with necessarily just discovering something new, but in combining 
things which are, which can be connected, combining insights, combining capabilities and technologies from different areas, and th and which seem previously un unrelated, which were unable to be bridged. You might see ways of doing that which others never really saw. You may see opportunities for putting things together in new ways. Anyone ever hear of the DC-3, uh, Douglas DC-3 airplane? It was uh, the first commercially viable airliner. It was back in the 1930s it came about. It became a workhorse during World War II, but it was first an airliner. First commercially viable, and there were five. You can find this in the, the documentation. Five technologies which existed on other airplanes, but they were molded together in the DC-3, and they were part of that being able to be profitable. And with the DC-3, commercial air airlines became profitable for the first time. So putting things together like that can um, definitely be a part of innovation, come from research, and going on into design and application. So being able to see applications of what you research and innovation, something as IIQ person will often have those type of insights. You need to know your current business well enough to know that uh, where you can find out things, where you can learn things, where you can discover things, uses for new products, improving um, existing products. It's not just getting a good idea, but being able to apply that within the corporation that's the key here. And this brings up the next thing, one of the, the real things which you may need to realize once you come up with an idea, with an innovation, you need to be able to sell it internally to whoever your management may be, whatever area you were in. And unfortunately, a lot of managers are rigid and hidebound and scared of innovation. Unfortunately, I find that to be true. They're administrators. They are concerned more with getting out the work than they are with having a vision for how things can improve new opportunities and are unwilling to take risks. So. Maybe you'll need to develop a way to uh, sell to them, under, understand how whatever innovation you come up with, whatever your research finds out, how that can improve the bottom line, either by improving things, cutting costs, or adding new revenue. That's just basic business. And if you're interested in research as a part of your job, you may need to ask during your interviews about what the research opportunities are there, and define for them what you mean by research that applies to your current business. It's not about uh, going online and investigating ancient aliens or something like that. You're not asking to be paid for that. You're asking to be looking for ways to cut costs, way to improve products, new products, things like that, and apply new ideas to your current job what the co company is doing currently as best as they can and uh, may need to talk about innovation may need to read up a little bit on innovation and taking reasonable risks again a lot of managers are scared of taking any kind of risks they're scared of letting people do something that isn't on the list of things that they have to do in their department so you may need to look for a manager who isn't that way or the alternative really which would be more common look for a way to be able to communicate to whoever is in management that's what this is about improving the business and hopefully you'll find people who are open to that in your management situation and as far as evaluating what you find out uh, you should have some sort of familiarity with the scientific method, uh, putting together hypotheses, falsifying them, and finding out an, a robust uh, hypothesis which does, isn't falsified, doesn't easily or um, not under the, isn't falsifiable under the current state of knowledge. You may need to uh, learn logic, learning uh, symbolic logic and other ways of logic to reason things out, 
methods of observation, evaluation, and me measurement. These are all things, if you're a high IQ person, are not over your head. You can learn them one step at a time. And next thing, how you're going to get some guidance, uh, look for matters, look for people who are in work research. But they're also actually published guides. Uh, craft of research. Look at this one, Amazon.com. Look at others, perhaps. Find it a guide which you can have for your reference that will guide you through that, how to present it. There are other guides for analysis and finding things out. How to find out anything, which deals with a lot of uh, ways to find out uh, things online and with experts. Analysis, Thinker's Toolkit. I'm not advising necessarily these books even, but look in these categories. And finally, whatever specific area you may have, you may find something for that book. Handbook for Classical Research, Greek and Latin, Culture, Language, History, etc. And there are other books on this specific area. Surprised? Well, there's always ways to learn about classical research, too. Because uh, even though it's a lot of old stuff, we still find out and think about new things there. So, um... Learn how to present and share your research is a really big key, though. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci did a huge amount of personal research, thought, and they came down in his notebooks. And it's been estimated that uh, things would have gone ahead in a number of areas of science, particularly anatomy, if his research had been more widely known. So keeping the credit for your own research is the thing though, keeping people from trying to plagiarize, hijack your research, exploit your research. You do need to consider that, but um, you do need to understand that it's when it's shared when, with collaboration um, is really where you can put things together. It makes your research more of a curiosity than a curiosity, than an idea, but you can get something to make something patentable, marketable, innovation, product, part of existing or projected product because really it does come out to making something that someone is willing to pay money for and that doesn't necessarily have to be a physical product it can be software it can be ideas it can be information and so on and uh, there is a lot that can be done and I would hope that there would be some way that uh, we could work out to uh, avoid people who do try to grab the credit for others research uh, maybe something that could be uh, time stamped or maybe uh, some sort of blockchain tech is an um, immutable research ledger time stamped uh, immutable and whatever area you're in particularly if you're in science technology engineering and math the stem careers learn the methods for your areas if you're in business a business area which may not be specifically one of those uh, areas there's a five by five research methodology and um, you'll find it in the book Michael Schrag uh, the innovators hypothesis how cheap experiments are worth more than good ideas cheap experiments and that's something that's come on in the past few years and you can find things about that in articles online the five by five research methodology you can google that and see ways to sell innovation experiments cheap experiments even using cloud technology etc within your own business again you might need to get find some way to work this out with rigid high bound scared management people who've been in the same area who haven't really um, kept up with what's possible in business right now you may need to sell it to them but a lot of innovations a lot of improvements have come across in the past couple of years where people have actually put that those uh, type of uh, research projects together. So I uh, consider looking into that way, way to collaborate, way to develop um, innovations. You know, in the company I retired from, I brought that up and I was amazed how many people didn't know about that, even though there were some places within the company where five by five experiments, variations on them were taking place. Innovation needs this type of collaboration, the research, 
and uh, experiments. So maybe I didn't mention this enough earlier, but experiments also are part of this. Cheap experiments, the cheaper that you can make them um, to, to prove a point, to investigate a point. But again, I would refer you to uh, Michael Schrape's book, uh, Innovator's Hypothesis, for more on that. And along the way, you may want to learn about patent and copyright laws. Uh, get a guide to that. They're fairly inexpensive. Again, Amazon.com. You can find all sorts of uh, articles on them. Two patents, uh, both group patents. Uh, one which was a large group patent, which I'm on. And the other one, which is uh, the ideas were entirely mine but I was the one that put them together that's the second patent and that happened not long before I, I did retire yay but uh, last thing um, I'm not sure I just put this down as a as a small point at the bottom but consider data science skills so get learning something about data science I think that data science is going to be something that's more and more automated for us and less something we have to have a specialized data scientist for although I think there will always be a, a place for the dedicated data science but they're data scientists but uh, books like this will guide you to feed free data sources free data stores online and uh, there are some that also you'll need to be pay, pay for but you may need to correlate them with others but they may be a source for research for investigations that you can pair with other stuff too for other implementations I don't I don't know what you have available but you may have more than you really realize at this point so develop your research capabilities research how to become a researcher how to develop your research capabilities and you can find other things also on YouTube about that maybe researching outside a university if you're in a university right now maybe places in business maybe laboratories uh, small research firms personal freelance research capability I don't know but if you're a high IQ person you might actually find that to be something that you really really love and I really do regret that I didn't really come into that except in the last two years of my career uh, two or three years of my career before uh, retirement even though they've been part part of my career um, off and on for a long time but I think you may find that uh, that, that really jump start your career in this world and also find so something that's really enjoyable and pays well for you and helps you to achieve whatever dreams that God may give you in this life thank you I hope that you um, appreciate this. I hope you. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Please like and subscribe. I would ask that you do that, and I'll be having some more on this. But um, my hope is that you can glorify God, enjoy Him forever in what you do. Thank you.